all, give a lot of credit to Clemson. It's a very good football team, very well coached football team. They played their hearts out. They made enough plays to win. They made one more play than we did to, to win the game, and they're a very deserving team. They did a great job. Uh, great atmosphere, great environment. Thanks for our fans. It was that's what I think of Doe Campbell. That's what I think of the, the atmosphere, the environment, the things that went on. Fans were ready to play. Uh, give our kids great credit for competition. They played hard, wanted to win, made plays at times, kept battling back, bumping back. In those games, it was a heavyweight fight. They're going to throw haymakers. We're going to throw haymakers. We kept going at each other, and we had an opportunity to to either seal it back up or uh, win it at the end, and uh, we didn't get it done. And uh, we let that go. It was a good two-minute drive all the way down. We had in field goal position, had the ball 40 seconds, a timeout, and we were in great shape. And have uh, two uh, very costly motion penalties. And then got behind and had a sack and then, uh, you know, lost it out. But kids battled back, made a lot of great plays. Uh, missing the two-point conversion was critical. Thought we had that, a good throw. Uh, come out of the route too quick. But uh, other than that, I mean, you know, they, but still guys battled. They played hard, left their guts on the line. They did. They left them out there on the field. They played very hard, but we got to play better. We had, uh, Great opportunities in the game, moved the ball well, ran the ball, threw the ball. I mean, they're a very good defensive football team. They caused a lot of problems, a lot of blitzes. Uh, but we were able to get some running game, got some passing game going at times. They did on us. They kept, we kept just, I mean, like I like said, heavyweight fight, just kept going back and forth. And uh, unfortunately, we left some out there we would. And uh, very critical plays in the game. Like I said, looking here, Dalvin had another great game. Uh, DeAndre threw the ball well, got pounded, got hit a little bit. You saw a great step up by Naquan Nooney, stepped up and really played big in the game. I told you I, I love the way he's been developing uh, in the in the game and Kermit, some of those guys and you know, they had good players, we had good players and heck of a thing. But uh fortunately we came up short. Questions? Jim of the uh the chop out call on the It's ridiculous. It's not a chop. It was not a chop. And I'm gonna tell you what, you hold coaches accountable, players accountable, hold the damn officials accountable. It's garbage. And then to call another penalty on the sideline is even more garbage. It's cowardly, it's gutless and wrong. Now they can take it, find it, do whatever they want to do with it. That's a fact. Look at the film. It's ridiculous that they do it. That was a huge call in the game. Now, didn't, still had chances to win the game after that, but it's ridiculous. And the guy wasn't even in a position to make it. And plus, it was 10 yards down the field, so the penalty should have been marked from there, not from the line of scrimmage. And it was targeting on 12 when he got hit in the belly, when he got knocked out, the crown of the helmet, right in the chest. We don't, he gets killed at Miami, we don't call it, gets killed here. Both of them, bad. Real bad. What was his explanation to you? Yeah, hey, there ain't none. Well, we didn't miss it. You know, the typical rah, 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 zip, boom, ba, boo. <laughs> and it's, it's terrible. When guys' lives and careers are on the line, and you're out there missing calls that obvious, it's ridiculous. Shouldn't be out there. Coach, the false start for the end, too, when the clock was running, was that something else that you were Yeah, I, I, I mean, the clock's running. They're running the clock. We're, uh, we're out of bounds. Uh, it had nothing to do with that. I mean, still had the motion. Shouldn't have had the motion. But they hadn't even seen it until we saw it. The, the targeting on Trey Marshall. On this time. I didn't think it was targeting. I still don't. I still think he led. He was the side of his helmet. I didn't think he led with the crown. They reviewed that. And they could review DeAndre, who's a quarterback, being exposed on a two-step deal. And don't call that. Whoever's in the booth is bad, too. Well, after a game like this, where you get a chance to sit back and look at Phil, I mean, do you call the ACC and voice? You're daggone right, I am. Send in the calls. I can take it any way they want. It mean, does something like that. Do those calls? Do they overshadow what happened with you? No, 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 no. They, 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 they were critical calls in the game. And unless Clemson won the game, I give them all. That's I mean, not why we lost the game. It's just a shame that you could have changed and seen what happened if you call the game properly. <laughs> That's their job. Jim, how, how difficult is it to, for, the, for the players? I mean, so many guys laid down the line. They uh, shouldn't be difficult. They got to go play for Because we still, even them, me, everybody, still made enough mistakes. You played your guts out, but you got to play better. We still had opportunities to win the game and didn't get it done. Had a lot of opportunities. I mean, it's great. They played their hearts. I have nothing to, I love our players. But we got to play smarter and better in some key situations. Because this, this is a really hell of a football team. And it's a shame because it's that close. It's that close, but you got to get over the hump. And that's what these next four games are going to do. You had a stretch, a stretch defensively where you pretty much lights out and then give up a couple of Yeah, but that's, that's what happens when teams get momentum and they get urgency. Yeah, it's what you, I mean, when you get, when you're like fighting, you're in a fight, somebody starts whipping you, 
All of a sudden, you get an urgency on your side, and you start making plays. That's why sometimes that's, and I don't mean this in any disrespect. I think that's why sometimes well, it was going good and all. Listen, the other team has an urgency too. That's what a competition's about. Just like us, they had us going for a quarter and a half, and all of a sudden, bam, we got on them and just bam, 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 and then they got us and we got them. That's what happens when two really good football teams with good players and, and teams are used to winning and get competitive. That's what happens. I mean, you find, it don't matter what's going on, you find a way to put that behind you and go make plays, and that's what happened. I mean, our defense played great. We give up some things. Uh, we got to get that fixed. I mean, we'll look at that, but it just their competition and their athletic ability and want to, too, and then ours coming back and theirs coming back, and that's, I mean, that's just what happens. I mean, it, I wish I could ever figure it out. I haven't in 29 years. <laughs> Come out, tell us that with Marshall, then when he's out, you're down effectively three starters. Oh, we are, big time, big time. I mean, that, that's a critical call. I mean, so I, I still don't. I mean, I know he's – and that big guy's coming down. So when he hits him, he hits him with the side of his helmet, in my opinion, right here. and got his shoulder in there. What do you want? The guy's 235 pounds. Is it tough to tell how the young guys did until you look at the film? Yeah, it is. I mean, until you see. I mean, I don't want to – you know, know some mistakes, but I mean, we'll watch a film before I make that. I mean, I love the we're competitive spirit. I love our team. I really do. I, we just got to play smarter in key situations. Got to play better. And that's, you know, I got to get them to do it. That's me. That's on me. Did you get the sense some of the pass protection breakdowns where guys get beat or more? <coughs> I can't, I, I would wait and see. At the end there, the one, that was, a, I thought it was a three or four man rush on, on you know, I, I don't, I don't know what happened. There was a couple guys just got beat. You know, I mean, they were right there and just got beaten. And I'll look at the eye again until I – we're saying on things until we see the film. Jim Bowen, how did it feel similar to North Carolina in the sense that you guys took a lead late in the game and they were able to march back down the field and score the mm -hmm. initial game when you touched down? What is it about this team where it's had some tough luck at home? Yeah, we just got to play good teams. We have good tough luck everywhere. You got to go make the plays. And then we had a chance to go back and score again. And we had down in the field goal range. We had two point, the two-point conversion. We convert that. That was – you know, it would have, that would have been a tie. Stayed as a tie right there too. So, but as they play good team, you got to finish. You got to keep finishing. Talked about how Francois just gets keeping beat up game after game. Talk about his strength and. Being that's, 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 that's what that's what you if that's what it's got to do. It's what you got to do. You got to stand there and take shots, and uh, hopefully we'll learn to protect him a little better as time goes on. Coach, you mentioned Nooney at the outset, a guy leading receiver. To go out there and do what he did tonight. He'd been pra he finally last week. He come on and practice and accept the challenge. I had some meetings with him and to you know grow up and not be. And as I say, he is great, but just little things and silly things, and that's what he's got to get out of. Now he he did that, and you see what he can do. I mean, the guy is the guy can be a tremendous, tremendous football player, and I love him. He's just, we just got to get him going. As far as your thoughts on Dalton tonight, of course, four times. outstanding. Yeah, he played out. He played well. Hit the big I mean, runs. Is that about as good of a game as you've seen him play? You... Oh, no, I've seen him play a lot of good ones. <laughs> I mean that. I mean, I'm not trying to be – I mean, really. I mean, that's just you – know, Dalvin, and he got space and he outran angles, you know, and <coughs> played really well. That was a shame because that was another big run. That was a 60-yard run they took back. They had the momentum going right there too. Jim, what did you think of your defensive line play? They got after Watson all night. They did. They going. They did. I mean, you know, again, I'll wait and we'll see it. But, I mean, they, they had their moments. I mean, they really stopped him and played well, played physical. And then, of course, Clemson come back and made some plays. I mean, that's what good teams do. But our guys our guys played hard, man. They played physical. They played hard. Again, we just got to learn to play those two or three critical plays a little better. One more. Coach, with Alvin's runs, were there? I ain't worried about that. Though. I'm going to finish up here before I get in there. Coach, with Alvin's runs, the, you know, the two runs for 130, uh, 13 yards, was there just play calling, something that just opened up? Or no, we, we saw they, they rotated second there, and we had checks with it, and we got in the right plays, and and uh, you know we, and then we got hats on the hat. Got a hat on the hat with the ball carrier, and they didn't have this, you know, they had to support the other way, and we got checks into the calls or got them to the right guys. And things we saw at halftime we thought we could get, and then our quarterbacks did a nice job of getting in. You know, we had them called, and they left them, and we checked into them. And that long run by Freddie. Um, it was a check out, too. They had to run the other way, and they overloaded back to Dalvin the other side, and we had a nice check, and and got it the other way. You know, that was really a big play by Sean. Come in the game for one play and to go in there and make that check. That was very critical. I mean, a really big time play. That's something when I noticed. I don't want to, you know, to go unnoticed. That was a really big thing. Come off the bench like that and make a check. Your first play in was real critical. You mentioned, you mentioned getting them to play better in critical situations. How do you do? I mean, experience, confidence. Experience and get them to do it. Just put them in it. Let them relax and do it. Jim was sorry, didn't ask somebody. Was there a common theme to the all starts as to what? They jumped. I don't know why they jumped in. We need to get them fixed. Cost us. Big time. You think about a game like this, and it seems like it's some of the things you've seen before, whether it's poor pass protection, false starts, things like that. I mean, at, at what point? I mean, do you well, guys some things on that side there, 
the guys, them guys are pretty good on that side too now. They were giving up about 280 yards a game and could rush and doing some things. They're stemming and moving and doing some things in there on the on the pass rush and stuff. Them guys are, there's, there's some pretty good players in there. Finish your question, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to ask this. I mean, when you The false about, starts are inexcusable. Should never happen, period. You know, in the, in the conversation. Well, between those and then, of course, just the pass protection and other things you've seen throughout the year. I mean, how do you guys go about just further evaluating how to make, eliminate those mistakes? I know one part of it for you is, hey, the teams you're playing, they're just good. That's going to happen. No, but you got to fundamentally go back and do it. Quit doing it. Don't do it. Right? We have noise. We've done concentration. Do everything. Can't can't get anxious. Can't do it. Or, or if you keep doing it, replace it. Do you see it in practice? No. What's the difference in them getting in the game? I, if I knew, I'd fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, you're just anxious, jump. Sometimes guys say stuff in games. People do stuff. We say stuff in practice. We do that. We put noise on. We do everything on it. Is it surprising me that this line was here last year? Yep, very. But you just got to do it better. Is it more of a... I think it's more of a mental thing, like across the line, they know that the opponent might get a little bit quicker than them, and they think. Nah, I don't think it's that. I mean, because they play against guys every day. I mean, you play against Sweat and Naughty and all those guys every day. You block and you go. You know what I mean? You just gotta, gotta learn to. And, and, and I don't think it comes from a bad place. Guys wanting to get a jump, wanting to get the block, wanting to get a step. You know, thinking that guy. You know what I mean? You just gotta relax and poise. At the end of the day, it's relaxed poise and experience usually does it. I thought we'd gotten out of it, but went back to it. Well, there's, it's a Florida State, so there are no moral victories. But there ain't no moral. What do you take from this game moving forward? Yeah, we played hard, like I told them down in the locker room. We played hard. I love you. We played great. Your heart, your soul. But, again, we have to find ways to do some little things better, a couple little things. And if you got to practice that way, you got to make it a priority, you got to go make your mind up that you're going to do it. I mean, there's no – again, when I, I love our players. They're good enough players. we got to go do it. we got to get them to play well at those critical times. And – I can say it hurts them. They were hurt big time because they put their heart and soul out there. But, again, you'll, you'll go back and look, and there's a lot of little things in that film that they're going to kick themselves for. But that's the way it is when you play big games. And as a coach, we have to make sure we're doing the right things and coaching them too. Coach, how do you, how do you make that from deflating to encouraging for the rest of the stretches? Point blank. It, it, is, it better be. Or if you go, I tell them, they go out there deflated on Monday, don't come out here. I'm going to run you off. <coughs> better come ready to win, go, go play four great games down the stretch. That's how you do it. Tell them. Then make them do it. Have you ever – you ever been flagged for arguing a call? No, I wasn't, I wasn't flagged. Oh, uh, was he? No, it wasn't on me. They called somebody else on the north sideline. Said he said something to him. And he didn't. The guy was saying something to himself and didn't say it to him. And to make that call at that time is ridiculous. After you knew he just blew a call. I hope everybody told him his name on TV so he got his name out there. <laughs> everybody was there to see him. They can take it any way they want it. Somebody needs to get something done. We good? Yeah. Sorry, just thought. How did they explain it to you? Because it looks like. Like our videos? Then you'll love being a premium member of Warchant.com with exclusive access to breaking news, insight, and analysis from the best on the beat. Enter the promo code Warchant30 on our sign up page and get exclusive premium access for free for the next 30 days. Warchant.com. Your ultimate seminal sports source.